All right, we're back here with our rebroadcast of Timberwolves football on Skunk Radio FM and MendocinoTV.com. I'm Wendy Peters. I'll be calling all the action here as you see the captains and co-captains out now at midfield as we get set for the coin toss for today's game. Initially, today it was overcast and foggy uh, during most of the JV game, but the sun broke out the tail end of that game, and it's turned into a very nice day for high school football. As I mentioned, most venues now are under the lights, but St. Bernard's, a private Catholic school here, nestled in a residential district of Eureka, has a beautiful field. Old-time Timberwolves fans, it kind of reminds me of Green Memorial Field in that there's a baseball field that's also part of this football field. And instead of being on left field as it was at Green Memorial, it's in right field right now. But there is uh, an athletic baseball field that's situated over across the way. As you get inside about the 40-yard line, going right to left, you'll see that baseball field over there, reminiscent of good old Green Memorial Field. But thank goodness we have Timberwolves Stadium now. Our games are at night under the lights, but it's great to have daytime football here as we get set to go. The captains now, as we get set for the coin toss, are being told after the introductions, uh, any little ground rules. I mentioned that the weather is nice sun-wise, Wind-wise, the way this field is situated, the wind actually is blowing across the field. So no one on either side of the football will be going into the wind as this game moves on. Now we'll keep our eye on it. The goalposts here do have little flags so you're able to watch the wind as the game progresses. But as we start, a light wind shouldn't affect the game and if anything, it's blowing across the field. There's the coin toss now as the official St. Bernard's has won. Christian Mello is their captain that the official is talking to. Nine times out of ten, especially at this level, when you win the toss, you elect to receive the football, unlike Coach Jim Harbaugh and his 49ers. But let's see what uh, St. Bernard's decides to do here as they set the teams up now. You can watch the official indicating they've won the toss and that they will receive. So the Crusaders are going to receive this football as you're listening on Skunk FM on the rebroadcast. They'll be moving right to left across your radio dial. And as you're watching on your television screens, St. Bernard's clad in their black uniforms with their green trim. Fort Bragg with their white uniforms, gray pants and purple trim. All right, St. Bernard's huddled around their coach getting fired up. The Timberwolves across the way around Coach Roy Perkins. Both head coaches graduated from Fort Bragg High School. Both head coaches were stars as Timberwolves, and they're battling across the sidelines under the headsets today in Eureka. <laughs> so the Timberwolves will be kicking off. Deep to receive is uh, Shed Bean along there back with him. Is Jared Guy. Harry Arnold will do the kicking off for the Timberwolves as we get set to go. And if you're just tuning in, this is a rebroadcast of Timberwolves football on the Skunk FM. And if you're enjoying the video, streaming MendocinoTV.com. St. Bernard's Crusaders and the Fort Bragg Timberwolves all set to go now. As Harry Arnold raises his hand, ready to kick it off. And here's the boot. It's a low ground ball kick picked up by one of the up man at the 25. He gets collared and down at about the 33 yard line. That was Oliveras who received the kickoff for the Crusaders and uh, brought down rather quickly. Good special teams play. And the Timberwolves so far this year, Harrion really hasn't boomed a kickoff. It seems like their strategy has been to try and squirt that ball down the field to avoid a long kickoff return. And, Thus far, the strategies worked. The, the teams haven't had very good field position on kickoffs. Granted, this is just the second game. So here we go. The Crusaders have it first and 10, 34-yard line. At quarterback, Christian Mello. He's got two backs behind him in the I formation. Gives a second band. He's going to the right side. He's got some room, cutting back, and uh, getting close to the first down that time. That was Ginevro, Nicholas Ginevro. And quickly now, the Crusaders are setting up here. Second down and one, the ball down to the uh, about the 43-yard line. So here we go, second down and one for the Crusaders. Just getting underway here, first possession. Bean with a man split left, man split right, now comes in motion back across to the left. 
Lone back behind him now, double tight end set here on the short yardage they give to the fullback. No, it's a fake. This is uh, Mello keeping the ball around the left. Nice move that time, and he is tackled and dropped after picking up the first down. So a first down carry that time for the Crusaders, and they move the chains in the Timberwolves territory down to the 46-yard line. It'll be first and 10 St. Bernard's. And again, this multiple set offense is uh, something you don't often see at the high school level, so the Timberwolves defense is going to be challenged here today. Double, double tight end, wide right, two backs, and whistles stop the play now in St. Bernard's. Actually, timeout for the Timberwolves. So we have a timeout on the field here with the Fort Bragg Timberwolves and the Crusaders just getting underway. 10.59 to go. Again, they play 12-minute quarters here in high school football. Thanks for joining us. Lindy Peters on the rebroadcast here of the Skunk FM and streaming video at MendocinoTV.com. One of the things you have to work on defensively when there's multiple sets of offense, you, you have assignments defensively, and when there's a standard offensive set, which most high schools run, you kind of know what your assignment is. You've been watching game film, and, and I'm sure they've checked out game film on St. Bernard's, but they come to the line very quickly, and they bring a different setup each time. So the Timberwolves defense this early in the season is going to be tested here, mainly on whether they can stay in their assignments. Here's a give now on the first play after the timeout and nowhere to go. Stacked up nicely that time. That was Nicholas Ginevro again. Picked up about a yard. The defense for the Timberwolves with a good job that time. Michael Coles. Jeff Francis again playing now after taking last week off. You'll see him in the linebacker spot there, number 54 in the middle. And uh, he figures to play a big part in this uh, defensive scheme here today. All right, here we go. Man split right, two men in the I formation. They give once again to Denevro, and he is once again dropped and stacked right at the line of scrimmage. Coming up was uh, Travis Thurber with the initial hit that time. Also, Francis came in there to finish him off. A loss, I think, well, call it no game on the play, so it's going to be third down and still about nine yards to go. So the Timberwolves hoping to hold them here. I don't think just across the 45-yard line of the Timberwolves, you're really in four-down territory. At the high school level, you never know, but we'll see. So this is a big play defensively. The Timberwolves can hold a bean. Has a man split out to the left, or mellow that is, with a man split out to the left. Two men split right. Now he rolls to his left. Rolls, got some time, looks, throws, complete. Oh, it's dropped! He turned to run with the ball. That was Shed Bean who turned to run with the ball before he caught it and thereby dropped it. And it's now fourth down and long. And we're probably going to see. We're probably going to see a punt here now. It looks as though out in punt formation is Rolo Oliveras, the six foot two, 190 pound senior for the Crusaders. Back to receive is the speedster Zach Smith, just a junior for the Timberwolves. And along with him is Todd Waugh. Both of them are fast and nimble when they get the football in the open field. So the punt will come from about the Timberwolves 44. There's the snap. Oliveras gets his punt away. It's a wobbly punt, but a good one. Smith touches it, drops it, picks it up still on his feet. His knee doesn't hit as he's hit by three Crusaders and now gang tackled at about the 16-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. The Timberwolves will have it deep in their own territory as they take over for the first time now on offense. We're going to mark it at about the 18-yard line. We're situated here just above the St. Bernard's home field, so most of the cheers you hear when things happen on the field will probably be for the uh, Crusaders, but I tell you what, Fort Bragg always travels well. There's a good crowd across the way, and I'm sure you'll hear them if exciting things happen for the Timberwolves. We're just getting underway on Skunk FM and MendocinoTV.com here in this one. First quarter, 9.40 to go. The Timberwolves for the first time on offense. And immediately the Timberwolves call a timeout, most likely because it might have been a delay of game there. And Coach Perkins, as he goes out, doesn't look very happy. 
I want Fort Bragg Timberwolves fans that are listening to this rebroadcast on the skunk and also those of you enjoying the video to know that one of the Timberwolves' great football players, Jacob Cimolino, is going to be on live television with his college football team, I believe, next Saturday. And that game should be broadcast at about 12.30. If you keep listening and maybe talk to your friends, I'm sure word will get out around town. But uh, next week, one of our greatest football players... It's hard to judge people because there are different positions in the game, but you could say the greatest football player to come out of Fort Bragg High School, Jacob Cimolino, now starting in college, and he will be playing on national television coming up here next week. His brother, Mark Cimolino, is uh, one of the assistant coaches for the Timberwolves. All right, after the timeout, we're set to go. Now Wall splits out to the left. The tight end, Reed Monson, lines up to the right side this time. Two backs split Even. behind... The quarterback, Tyler Ashby, who's wearing number 21 now, not number two. He gives to the first man through, and that's Richards, and a nice run that time. Picks up about six as he gets across the 25-yard line. Richards also wearing a different number. Those of you watching on video might remember last week he was number 32. Today he's wearing number 22. That's Jacob Richards running back. There are some number changes here. We should mention Anthony Costello, who comes in oftentimes in long yardage situations at quarterback, will be wearing number 30 as you watch on your video. All right, Brandon Palmer splits way out to the right. Inside him in the slot is Wall as Ashby has a little mix-up on the handoff, keeps it himself, and dives forward for a first down across the 30-yard line. So that time the running back got to... Ashby, before he was able to hand the ball off, and rather than panic and try and give it to him, he just put the ball under his arm and ran himself and picked up a Timberwolves first down. First and ten Timberwolves, ball at their own 30-yard line, just underway, first quarter, nine minutes to go in this rebroadcast on the Skunk and streaming video on MendocinoTV.com as an ambulance goes rolling by. There's the give to Richards. He's bucking his way across for about an eight-yard gain on the left tackle and brought down nicely that time by Ben Cordes, who kind of got run over but made a nice play. Or Richards, if he broke that last tackle, had a lot of open field ahead of him. So it'll be second down and about two now for the Timberwolves. And as Crusaders have called a timeout on the field. After the timeout, the Timberwolves with second down and short. Oh, ball at their own 39-yard line now as Ashby over center. Two men split out here to the right. Fakes the belly give, gives it to Richards. Gets by one tackle, moves the ball from one arm to the next nicely that time to avoid contact with the tackler and picks up another Timberwolves first down. So Jacob Richards running like a colt let loose in the corral. His first couple of runs there. And picks up a first down. So the Timberwolves have it first and 10, their own 45 yard line. 8.22 to go, first quarter. Just in a way, no score. The Crusaders won the toss. They went down, were unable to get much further than across midfield, punted the ball. And this is the Timberwolves' first possession. They moved it out to the 45 yard line. There's a give again to Richards, and this time he is stopped. And there's a flag going in there that time. There might have been a face mask. A nice low tackle that time by Nicholas Ginevro. And let's see what the call is. It is, in fact, a face mask. I thought I saw a hand get in there. This penalty was called in the junior varsity game a few times. The Crusaders are taught to gang tackle. They're taught to hold that guy up a little bit at the line of scrimmage, at least from my vantage point, watching what I saw in the JV game and seeing what I'm seeing early on here. And sometimes when that last guy comes in to try and wrestle a guy down, all that's left is up high to grab onto, and they've been getting that face mask. Not intentionally, not really grabbing it and twisting it, but enough that it's been a penalty, and that was just a five-yard penalty that time, not a personal foul, so it gets it across midfield. It's going to set up second down and about four. The Timberwolves have it at the 48-yard line of St. Bernard's. Ashby now with a man split out left, the backs in the I formation behind him, double tight end. They give again to Richard. This time he has stopped at the line of scrimmage as he rolls and can't get away. Nice play that time by the interior lineman for the Crusaders, Mana. Tano Vasa was the first man to hit him, and co talking to Coach Jason White before the game, he told me, watch for Mana Tano Vasa on defense because he's a good one, and he's got good size. He's 6'1", 280 pounds. So no game on the play. It's going to be second down and two. The ball again at about the 47, 48-yard line of St. Bernard's. 7.29 to go, first quarter, no score. 
rebroadcasting this game on the Skunk FM and on MendocinoTV.com. Streaming video, I'm Lindy Peters. As we get said, Ashby sends Palmer in the motion, gives it to him on an end around, and oh, they had some yardage, but the flag went. I think Palmer may have left too early. It might be a procedure call, let's see. That's it. The procedure call against the Timberwolves that time. Boy, that play had set up nicely. Had, had the uh, play not been nullified by a penalty, it looked like there was going to be some good yardage that time. May have taken it down into the red zone, but instead it's a five-yard penalty. It'll still be second down, but it's back across midfield now. Back at the Timberwolves 48-yard line where it'll be second down and seven. No score from Eureka, St. Bernard's High School here. Labor Day weekend, Paul Bunyan Day's back at home. Hope folks are having a good time. All right, Ashby with a man split left and a man split right in the backs of the I formation. Gives to Richard again, trying to get outside. Is tackled just across midfield. The initial hit was Jared Guy. And I, some of these tackles, I think those of you watching this on video, the, the tackler is getting the worst of it right now from Richard. But he is being corralled thus far. He hasn't been able to break a, a long gainer. But uh, he certainly has been getting some yardage here on this first series. All right, now it sets up third down and about five. The ball just across midfield on the St. Bernard side. Splitting out here to the right, that's Brandon Palmer. Inside of him is Wall. Man split wide out left, couldn't quite see who that was. Back to pass is Ashby. And he is, he is tackled down at the 40-yard line, a sack that time. And once again, the big guy, Manu Tanavasa was in there to make the stop. And now it's going to be third and long, or fourth down and long, I'm sorry. Ball back at the Timberwolves 41 yard line. And they're probably going to have to be forced to punt here. So each team has had the football. Each team has moved the ball and gotten the chains moved a few times. But the Timberwolves actually had a, probably a better offensive series. But each defensive team has held here in this first quarter. 5.45 to go. The Timberwolves will punt two men back for the Crusaders. As Herring gets the punt off, it's a high punt, takes a Fort Bragg bounce, continues to bounce inside the 20. Nice punt all the way down to the, about the, uh, let's see what they mark it, about the 17 yard line. Excuse me, the 17 yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Crusaders, their second series, this time a little deeper in their own territory. No score, first quarter, 527 to go here. Remember, the Crusaders like to go right off the bat, so the Timberwolves defense better be ready. They're already at the line. There is no huddle for this team as they come out on this first, uh, second offensive series. Quarterback Christian Mello barks the signals off to the left. Formation strong right, lone back, pitch to him. As he goes around the right, he is collared immediately by Reed Monson with good outside containment on the left side, tackling him at about the 15-yard line for about a two-yard loss, although they may mark it up at about the 16, so call it a one-yard loss. It'll be second down and 11, a nice defensive containment by the left defensive end for the Timberwolves, Reed Monson. The Timberwolves run a 4-4, which sets up usually pretty good outside containment. They got tested last week on that spread offense from McKinleyville, and right now, here comes a spread offense from the Crusaders. Two men split way out here left, and instead they give to the first back, and he has dropped again after little or no gain. And the ball carrier that time was Logan Bonjo. Bonjo that time really didn't have much blocking up front, had nowhere to go, and he was stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So it's third and nine. Now three men are split out here to the left as once again the play is sent in from Jason White. Like I said, the team doesn't huddle up. They yell out the plays. They all have wristbands. You might be able to watch it on video. They're looking at their plays on their wristbands now as they get set to go here. Third down and nine. The ball at their own 18 for the Crusaders. The Timberwolves need a stop. Back to pass. mellow has got a man wide open. He makes the catch here on the sideline. Eludes one tackle. Eludes another. He's across midfield. And out of bounds at the Timberwolves. 40. Well, right at midfield, he went out of bounds. Oscar Pimentel. 
got the catch that time, and nice run after the catch by Pimentel as he sort of zigzagged his way up the left sideline and finally was knocked out of bounds by Ashby right at Zach, midfield. Zach so it's first out. and ten, a nice third down conversion for the Crusaders that time. They have it right he at midfield. Got, got Four minutes to go now screen. in this first quarter. Mello with two tight ends now. Gives to his back. He's got some room across the left side and stopped after picking up about three. That was Nicholas Ginevro. Once again on the carry for the Crusaders. Travis Thurber, along with the linebackers, helped stuff that play. So it'll be second down and about uh, seven yards to go. The ball at the Timberwolves 48 yard line. The first down marker down at the Timberwolves 40. First quarter, 3.27 to go, no score. Crusaders and Timberwolves here from Eureka on the Skunk FM and MendocinoTV.com. All right, Mello, fake, play action, throw, got a man. Oh, threw his hands, incomplete. Wall had the coverage that time. The intended receiver was Alex Lopez. And don't want to maybe project the fact that he heard footsteps from up here, but that might have been the case. Wall was closing in, but he wasn't going to be there in time to break up the play, but certainly to make the tackle, and maybe that time Lopez saw him coming. So it'll be third down and long again for the Crusaders. The ball at the 48-yard line of the Timberwolves. Clock stopped after that incompletion. 3.17 to go. First quarter, no score. Once again, the Crusaders get the play from the sideline. They run the spread formation on this play with one long back, and... What do we have? Timeout, Crusaders. Timeout, Crusaders. One of the reasons you try and run an offense without a huddle and run the plays in from the sidelines uh, via the coach is to prevent delay of game penalties, but it, at that particular junction, it seemed as though Crusaders were taking a little too much time for Coach Jason White. I don't think really he saw anything defensively that he wanted to change, but maybe he did. So it'll be third and long when we come back. We'll take a short break here during this timeout. <clears throat> Three, two. After the timeout, 3.17 to go, first quarter, no score. St. Bernard's has a third down and eight. The ball to the Timberwolves, 48 yard line. Again, this multiple set offense, different look on this play than they had initially before the timeout. Three men are split to the right. Mello, looking that way, rolling to his right. Rolling, rolling, now he throws. Got a man wide open, he leaps, incomplete. Up the right sideline that time was Pimentel. And boy, I tell you what, Mello, the quarterback for the Crusaders, put that one where it was catchable, and he's put he's had a couple of passes dropped here so far, but he, he certainly, uh, has been yeah, pretty much on target here in the first quarter, and the Timberwolves like are going to have to shore up their pass defense because one of these plays, they're going to break one if this keeps up. 3.08 to go now. Again, the clock stopping with an incomplete pass. One of the things about a passing offense uh, is that it, the games will take a little longer, even at this level. All right, the Crusaders will punt. There's the snap. There's the punt. It's a low punt. It's touched by Smith, it goes over his head, he picks it up at his own two yard line. Trying to get outside and is out of bounds at about the nine yard line as he tried to sweep to the right that time. That's a second straight kickoff that has bounced. He's tried to field, he's touched, he's mishandled it initially and he's been great at going back and getting the football before it goes to the Crusaders. So it's a good thing the Timberwolves held on to the football that time. It's marked right at the 10 yard line. So the Timberwolves have it for their second time deep in their own territory. Starting this time at their own 10 yard line. 2.56 to go here in the first quarter. No score, Crusaders and Timberwolves here. Rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. I'm Lindy Peters on this Sunday. And if you're watching the video streaming, you're on MendocinoTV.com. You can watch us here all season, all games. All right, the Timberwolves come up first and 10. And somebody moved before the ball was snapped. Richards that time, the split back that looked like they were running the old cross buck that time. And he moved a little early, so that'll bring it back five yard five yards down to the five yard line and this could be a field possession situation for the Timberwolves here there. They really need to pick up a first down or two or St. Bernard's is gonna get the ball in good field position if they can't move the chains. The guy to block is uh, Mana Tanuvasa, number 52 for the Crusaders. 
as he lines up defensively just off the Timberwolves' right side of the line. There's Richards, got the ball, fighting again for tough yardage out to about the nine yard line, about a four yard gain. So remember it was first and 15 after that penalty, so it's gonna be second down and 12 now as the Timberwolves have to get the ball out across the 20 yard line to get a first down. 2.36 to go, first quarter, no score from Eureka, St. Bernard's High School here. Nestled in the residential district. Off to the east, you can see the redwood covered hills, back, backdrop Eureka, and it's just a gorgeous day here. Second down, Ashby gives this time to White. He's got it, and he gets up for about another four or five yard gain, but the Timberwolves are gonna have third and long now, deep in their own territory. Down to about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. If you just joined us, the Crusaders received the kickoff. They were thwarted and stopped. The Timberwolves took the ball down across midfield, had a big sack for a loss and had to punt it. The Crusaders got it. The Timberwolves stopped them, and this is the Fort Bragg's second series, and they got a third and seven, the ball back at their own 13-yard line. Ashby sends Juan motion and gives to him, and he is tackled for a loss. Back behind the line of scrimmage that time. So once again, Monotone, once again, uh, Monotone Vasa blew right through that and broke up the play as Wall that time went in motion, took the pitch or the handoff as he went by quarterback Ashby. But as soon as he got the ball, there was uh, big number 52, Monotone Vasa. So the Timberwolves have to punt from their own end zone. The ball being snapped from the nine yard line as Harrion will punt it out deep to receive at their own 43 with the possible good return here, getting good field position. With it is Shed Bean. Bean gets a block, goes around the left side, breaks a tackle, and then is hit and knocked out of bounds by Waugh. But not before he gets great field position for the Crusaders to take over first and 10 at the Timberwolves, but their 33 yard line. Down under a minute to go, first quarter, 48 seconds to go, no score so far. And the Timberwolves now will turn it back over to their defense and hope that they can hold here. Watching the uh, place kicking efforts in the warm-ups for St. Bernard's seemed to have a pretty good leg, pretty good kicker. I didn't catch his number at the time watching the warm-ups, but field goal certainly might be a possibility for them in this game. The wind doesn't seem to be a factor either way. All right, first and 10, back is Mello. Got a lot of time. Puts a high pass into the air, nobody down there. And he probably was told by his coach, if nobody's open, throw it away. And if you're going to throw it away, you might as well throw it to Aunt Betty in her house sitting across the street, because that's about what he did. Penalty flag on the play, and I believe that they're going to have to call it. Well, I don't know if they would call intentional grounding. He may have put the flag back in his pocket, but no, they're talking to the Timberwolves. And that might be an intentional grounding, because there was nobody within 10 yards of that football, even on their own sideline. Even one of their own fans wasn't 10 yards from that one, and that's the call. Intentional grounding. Now, I'm not sure. I don't know if the, uh, if the uh, quarterback got mixed up in that or the wide receiver, but those of you that saw that on video know what I'm talking about. The, the, the quarterback dropped back to pass. He had a lot of time. He threw an alley-oop pass, a lob pass. Mello did, but there was no one even near it. And into the end zone, the pass fell. The nearest player, either team, probably 15 yards away. So there's the intentional grounding call. And it'll be first, uh, first down and 15. There's no loss of down on that. Or Well, I, I thought there was. Let's see. Yes, the official's telling the chain gang it's second down because on intentional grounding, there's also a loss of down along with the penalty. And there you have it. So it's going to be second down and 15. The ball back out to the 39-yard line of the Timberwolves. St. Bernard's has it. 41 seconds to go here in this first quarter, and with a lot of passing and most of them incomplete, it's taking a long time to play this quarter. All right, so here we go, Mello. Over center, quick pitch this time to Ginevra. He's got it around the right side, cuts back. A flag goes flying in as a tackle is made down at the 30-yard line. Metlin was in there, I believe, and, well, let's check this flag first. The penalty with 33 seconds to go in this first quarter has stopped action and 
officials am amongst themselves right now talking, and now the head referee will signal the flag. He's picking it up. There is no flag. He's picking up the flag. No flag. So no penalty, and that play, as I called it, will stand. It's to the 30-yard line. It's going to be third down and about seven now. In this first quarter, no score. Rebroadcasting on the Skunk FM, I'm Lindy Peters on MendocinoTV.com. Hope you're enjoying our streaming of this game. What a day for football. Just picture perfect here as we enter the month of September. One man split out left, double tight end formation. Mello's looking his way, throws his way, he makes the catch. Stiff arms, ball's loose, picks up his own fumble that time. Shed Bean made the catch that time and, and actually broke a tackle, but as he broke, tried to break us away, Brandon Palmer made the stop and knocked the football out of his hand, I believe short of the first down. And that's the end of the first quarter. So, 12 minutes are in the book. The score after the end of the first quarter, it is Fort Bragg nothing and St. Bernard's nothing. I'm Lindy Peters for the Skunk FM. We'll be back with more action here. Stick around.